What's going on, Solid Steppers? This is Miss Ward coming to you. I wanted to have a conversation today about uh, fear. We're going to talk about a couple of things, which is why I have the camera turned around. Today I'm getting a late start because I really wanted to lay my ass in bed like the rest of y'all. It's been a holiday weekend. You know, very rarely do I even take holidays off. And I really took it off because um, I really wasn't feeling well. And I know I needed a rest. Y'all give me a minute. Got to hook up the... It's looking real suspect over here. All right, y'all will get over it. Okay, so, so let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, you know you got to take care of yourself. The health thing is real. As I drink, they're probably the most unhealthy thing in the world, but it is what it is. So, this, this weekend I was feeling a little under weather and I was pushing through some jobs. And I went and knocked out the jobs and I didn't feel, I felt horrible, but the point was I grinded out and it was what it was. But it gave me an opportunity to sit back and reflect on a lot of things. So this morning, I don't really want to go do nothing, but guess what? I signed up for this. So I got to warm it up and get it done. So I'm, you know, getting my life in order, calling all my calls in. You know, most of my warranty stuff, 99% of all my warranty stuff is automated, so rarely do I have to call in. But I had a couple of check-in advisors that I went ahead and knocked out because I just hate waiting on anything. And, you know, I called them in and got everything handled. Then I had was owed a little cheese here and then I grabbed some of that. So, not that stuff out there, admin side, which is the most boring side of the game. All the people that like the administrative side, shout out to the operational people because you have a gift that the rest of us don't have. I have I have the ability to do it simply because I understand management and that it's a necessary e evil. That being counters, as much as people hate on y'all, y'all really say today because the rest of us just be out here wilding, buying stuff we don't need, stuff we already got. <coughs> How many of y'all going to Home Depot and got to pick up, pick up a set of bits or screws or this or that? I'm one of the people, even if I got to look too hard for it, I'm going to buy it because I'm not going to be able to do it. But that goes back to organization. But everybody got their stuff. So I'm saying all this to say a couple of things. Y'all look at us on YouTube and think we got it all together. And, you know, we want to get up here and we're the best. Uh, it's some BS. Let me tell you something because all of us are human. We all got our stuff with us, our drama, our flaws, and everything else. Do not let nobody fool you. Because I'm telling you, I done watched some people come down here being all people, people, and got their feelings hurt. Because they was not the truth. Shout out to Sal. Thanks for getting that image to me. So anyway. So everything starts with you. So the first thing I was thinking about. Y'all keep hitting me up. I'm trying to, y'all, I swear I'm trying to do this video, but everybody, your mama wants to hit me with a text right now. So, um, and you know, I, I got that dog on squirrel mentality where I be like, squirrel, squirrel, I just forgot about what the hell I was talking about. But anyway, we're going to get this out. So, rule number one, hold you accountable and deal with you. So this morning, there's some jobs I've been turning down because I, of my own personal fear. Yes, Miss Ward has fears, we all do. But I understand the deal with fears. You just have to face them and then they become nothing. Prime example, how many of y'all had a job y'all were scared to touch and do just because you had a bad experience in the past? And you don't realize the bad experience is when you didn't know shit. When you were just out here wilding and you thought you knew and then you went up there and bumped your head a couple of times like I ain't never. Like you hear me say all the time, I hate dishwashers and washers. And some of my favorite customers call me and they need me to work on those units. And I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I, the other part of me be like, you better do it. Because guess what? It's part of the game. So that's why I talk to my brothers that specialize. So for instance, when you're in an appliance repair, you got to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to specialize in certain things where you can control your profit margin? Like for instance, look at the R600 game. It's going to be a lot of people getting knocked out of the game simply because they don't touch the R600. And then you're going to have all these people who don't know what R600 and be mixing it with R134, tap and go. It's just, it's going to be horrible because they're not going to pay attention. I see it coming. It's too many appliances I run into that are coming on the market that are R600, R600, R600. So now that we know this is in route, what do you do? Do you go out here and get properly trained on using the lock ring that everybody hates? And you know, I always hear the lock ring professionals say the only reason they hate this because they're not doing it right. 
So, you know, that could be some validation there. It could be leaking because in our mind, we still brazen and welding. I don't know. I'm not going to get in that boat because it's not my area. I'm just saying, though, is how do you prepare to put yourself in a position where you can do what no one else can do and you can get paid for it? So, prime example. One of my mentees came down, rolled with me, and he rolled with me. And that's one thing about my ride-alongs. If you ever do a ride-along with me, it's never just me. You're going to ride one day with me. You're going to ride two days with two other uh, of my competitors because I want people to see it from every point of view, just not how I do business. Because I do business different. <coughs> and there are a lot of things that actually go in my process. Prime example. Like, my mindset is totally different. But when I tell people, they be like, oh, that makes sense. To me, it's common sense, but my brain works that way. So I realize that everybody don't think like me. Those who do, congratulations. Those who don't, hey, do you. I ain't hating on nobody. But I'm saying all that to say, let me give you a prime example. Look at ProConnect. When I teach my mentees how to make ProConnect work for them, they freak out because all of a sudden, they start making three to six thousand dollars a week from pro conduct and be like oh my god it depends on the grind and how you grind and how you pick and choose and the only thing i told him was look choose wisely check your zip codes and make sure you choose appliances that you can charge accordingly for your gift that you feel confident in fixing to me that's common sense you feel me but i also understand that some people believe in quantity not quality so, prime example, my mentee came and rode with me and rode with some other people. <coughs> and when he rode with me, he realized I was more, my clientele was of a different caliber, but also that my clientele was high end. So, when I went in to do the five tickets for the day, the average ticket might have been eight, nine hundred dollars. So, I'm clearing X amount of dollars that day, say, so let's just say four thousand, just to put a number out, and maybe eighty percent of that is profit. So eighty percent of four thousand is thirty-two hundred dollars profit. All right, so eight hundred dollars on parts, blah blah blah. But that's how I move. So if you can, you imagine doing that four days a week, not five. That's how I move. But that's what I understand. Now, how do I continue that process and make sure it stays? Is because I'm constantly tweaking. Like when I deal with a company like ProConnect, they've done the data. So when they're sending out work to me, I understand what the demand is. And if I want to run Google ads in the area and target a certain clientele, I've already had the first hand experience. I've deciphered their code. And so I'm going to make it work for me. Prime example, like I had a lady call me this morning, work my last nerves on a built-in kitchen aid. Y'all y'all better get up here. Y'all why well, I let three of y'all in, it's over. That's the limit. But you know, y'all excuse me, I'm still getting over this cold because I ain't believe me. It take a lot more than a cold to get my ass. Trust me, I'm not having skip the variant. I'm not living that life. I don't even think in that, that mindset, you feel me? I'ma stay healthy and whole all my life. Trust and believe to the very end. But anyway, um, but that's what I mean about how you got to look at it. So everything you take, you need to understand how to decipher it. Because every time something comes across your desk, you decide whether I'm going to get it or not. Like prime example, I had something come from Old Republic. It's a customer that had three appliances <coughs> to check out. Now, the customer actually is in one of my high-end areas. It's a uh, high-rise here in Fort Lauderdale on the beach. A lot of, lot of high-end clients, but also have a certain mentality in that building. So I looked at him, I looked at the floor. Usually when I go in that building, I deal with the penthouse. So I pretty much know what floors are, you know, the people who really um, move a certain way. So I looked, this guy was on the 42nd floor. Well, I'm sorry, you're in the high-end high-rise, but you know, your floor ain't high enough. So I'm not servicing you, and I'm gonna go in there for Old Republic, even though I know I could have easily came out of there with three G's easily because of the appliances but the fact that number one he put three three appliances on one service call order which pays me a hundred dollars is a loss already because I shouldn't be 
Arthur Rick getting a, a, a co collecting a fee for 100 bucks when I'm looking at three different appliances. How about that? These are facts. All right, so that's the loss. And then the fact that this guy blew up my phone on Sunday and Monday, I already knew he was going to be irritating customers. So what I do is I declined the service that, let them know that I'm overbooked, and I gave an opportunity to somebody else that works for Old Republic in that area to get it because I already knew. So then I thought I already declined the work. The guy calls me again, and me being who I am, I called him back. I really should have just ignored him because I already knew the energy because I know the building and I know the floor. He's not high enough. It is what it is. So I talked to him and I was like, I said, we're booked about two to four weeks out. He said, well, what if I wait two weeks? Can I still get you? I was like, I've already declined it so that they can get someone there to expedite your concerns. So he's like, so you're telling me if I waited two weeks, I still you have great reviews, blah, blah, blah. It's obvious you don't want the business. Now you see how I read him before I even worked with him. I already knew he was an asshole before I dealt with him because I understand the clientele in that building and the floors. I know that X amount of floor is high, high, high end, and I know any other floor is either a renter that's pretending to park or somebody's kid who's in there for school or whatever, or somebody renting. I'm telling you, I know these, everywhere I go, I know the elements, so I'm not going to subject myself or my staff to some idiots. It ain't worth the money. It's never worth the headache, the long-term headache that you saw coming. So when you're in business, you gotta decide, do you want the money or do you want the peace? And there's a way to get both, but you gotta always be on guard. Like I had to get my rest this weekend. I could have grabbed through, I could have worked yesterday. Cause I'm used to working holidays. I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even look at holidays. They don't exist in my world, you know? I have to slow down for Mother's Day. Just remember my mama was here. That's how real it is, but I'm out here to get me. And you know, I got, I want to leave a legacy. There are seven uh, young people in my life that I want to make sure they don't have to work for nothing. They know who they are. But at the end of the day, you got to make those kind of business decisions. I hear so many people go work with people and do work for customers. They didn't want to complain about them, but you knew they were jerks before you started. They somebody else's customer. There's some people, they would treat people, blue collar people like they ain't shit. That is never, let me tell you something, that is never happening. Because if you come sideways in this world, I got something for you. Trust and believe. But that's what I mean about your business. Then let's deal, let's go back to what my original conversation was, which was about fear. You're going to have to face some of these fears, people. Like right now, I got this antique I'm working on. I'm scared of hell of it. There's something else I hate working on. But the point is, is that I always get my hair together because every time I reach out and depend on somebody, their ass ain't that. Let's keep it real. And sometimes when you reach and ask somebody to help you, they don't show up or they got an issue to come up. You got to be thankful because your punk ass wouldn't go if you didn't have the backup. I, I know that's my story. It's plenty of situations where I couldn't depend on people. I went out and I got set all the way up. But it made me so much better. First of all, it made me depend on myself, number one. Number two, it also got me better, made, made me become better at my craft. So now I got this whole deal where I'm doing X amount of jobs a day. Evening up over. <coughs> or evening work that has to do with refrigeration. My subs will take care of that because that's usually high end. Those tickets are usually over $1,000. So I just let them knock it out and, and we're good. 